Hi, this is Connie from Connie's Creations, and I'm here with my assistant. Hello, I am Jake from Peyton being their friend, and today I'm just going to be a cameraman and a commentator. I have two red-eared sliders. They are water turtles. And if my assistant will swing the camera around, you can see them. They are in a 55-gallon tank, and I've took the filter out because it makes a lot of noise with the water splashing. But um, there you can see my two turtles. They are about mm, six years old, I want to say. I've had them since 2019. They're fully grown now. And um, they used to belong to my daughter, and now I have them. They are very dirty, very messy. They have to be cleaned every week. Every Saturday is my turtle cleaning day. And also, if you're thinking about getting them, they are very expensive because uh, you need, um, of course, the aquarium, then you need a setup for them. They need a water heater. They need a filter. They need a heat lamp. They need a UV light. Um, and then there's another one that they need. I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, they have to have special lighting. And uh, they have to have, uh, like, my cage set up that is actually homemade for a basking area where they can get out of the water and bask under the light and warm up. They have a floating dock on the, in the tank on top of the water there. But, and this is already an extra large dock, but where they've gotten so big, only one of them fits on there and they'll knock each other off if both of them try to get on there. My water heater is actually an Eheim heater. It's a German company that makes them. And you can actually turn a knob, which I can show you guys later, to adjust the temperature by one degrees, you know, and you can self-adjust it because I found that the store-bought um, water heaters that's preset are not getting warm enough. I didn't like it that you couldn't adjust it. And, of course, you have to buy them according to the size of the tank. You should have 10 gallons for every inch of turtles. So, really, my turtles would need a 100-gallon tank. I know this tank is getting too small for them, but it's quite an investment. They're over five or $700, the 100-gallon tanks. So they're going to have to wait a little while before I can upgrade but I think that they're still just barely fine in the 55-gallon aquarium. So now let's get ready to clean. Let me show you my supplies down here. So we have a piece of cut-off water hose because I'm going to be draining the tank out of my window. That makes it easier and I don't have to schlep all the water in buckets. Then I have two buckets and I have an old dish brush that I'm going to be cleaning things with. And then we have, of course, the suction pump to suck out the debris in the bottom. And this is actually a litter box that I keep the turtles in while I clean their tank. And they've not managed to climb out of it yet. So let's move back over here and get set up. So now we're going to have to disassemble. Let's turn off all the electricity first. I have this on a stick where everything is plugged in. We'll flip that and then we'll unplug a bunch of stuff. The only thing I leave plugged in is the water heater because that doesn't leave the tank. Up here I have a little folder that's just so that the light doesn't blind me in the room. I have a little rock under here to give it a little bit of distance from the UV light 
to the cage because it gets really hot. Then we also have up here a fishnet for cleaning debris, a little sponge to be cleaning the glass on the inside that we'll be using here in a little bit. So now I'm going to unhook this heat lamp. And there's the heat lamp. This is actually a splash proof one. If it gets wet, it doesn't explode. <laughs> yeah, really. I have this contraption here that I bought that has the UV light in it, and it's supposed to have the heat lamp in there too, but I'm not sure about the wattage on the heat lamp, and I'm afraid I don't want to overheat it, put a stronger bulb in there like I'm supposed to, so I'm just keeping my old clamp heat light, the lampshade. So this cage here is actually from stuff that I got at Lowe's, in the aisle where the tile are. I think somehow you use this stuff to make tile or use it when you lay tile, I don't know. But this, you can cut this really easy, it's plastic. And then I just cut the pieces together and made them basically a cage that has a ramp that goes down into the water and then they can climb out of the water onto the top of the tank. So this is like a homemade contraption here. Put this off to the side. Then we're going to take the filter out. I done pulled this up and stuck it up here. Drain a little bit of water out. And then we'll take this to the utility room and put it in my sink. Am I supposed to follow you there? No, you don't have to. Oh, hallelujah. You can show the turtles while I do it. <clears throat> do our turtles have names? No, they don't have any names. It's just, no. <laughs> so, over here, if you want to come in closer, the floating dock. It comes with suction cups. So after a while, the suction cups, they stop working. They don't, you know, cling to the glass anymore. So what I do is I just buy these here instead. Like the bottom ones don't even cling anymore. So I just use these and I replace them as they get old. <clears throat> because you can't replace these here, at least I don't think you can. So then we will take this out. And this is actually what we'll clean later with the brush. We we'll give that a good rubbing here after a while. Just disassembling everything at the moment. So now we're going to take out the turtles. And also turtles do carry salmonella. So I do not touch my face when I do the cleaning and then afterwards I wash my hands really good and scrub really good so I don't get any salmonella. There's one of them. They're hey. both girls. So there they are. You can tell they look differently. You can see when I get the other one out. This one has a lot of yellowish back here and kind of zigzaggy at the end. So we'll put you in the kitty litter box here. There you go. Now we'll get the other one. They can bite. So don't get <laughs> like bit. A, like a snapping turtle, they will latch on and not let go. But I always keep my fingers either halfway or just a little bit. I mean, you should have them at least halfway in the middle away from their face. You can hold them like this and see how this one here is shaped differently in the back. It's not as yellowish and more rounded back here, like no, not much zigzaggy. But this is the other one. So you can tell, I mean, they're pretty big. 
chair. That's what they look like underneath. If you handle them slowly, calm, they will not fight you. I mean, they're just looking around and, you know, interested in things. So just, yeah, the main thing is just to be calm. And of course, do not drop them. If they start like paddling with their hind legs, they can really start scratching, you know, and they have scratched me before, but you just have to be careful and just, you know, do not drop them. <laughs> yeah. But they also do know their people. Like when I walk around in here, they do not get scared. But when like other people come to the house, they will get skittish and freak. So they do know their people. And they know when it's feeding time, they will beg for food. So we'll put you in here. So now we're going to start cleaning this mess. And what we're going to do with this vacuum pump here, of course, it works by gravity. So we're going to put this in the water. And then we're going to... Put it in the water, and then you're going to bend it here in the back to get all the air out of the hose. It, all the air has to get out. And then we're going to put our thumb over the end and pick it up so it traps the water on the inside. And then we let it pour into the bucket, and then we position it right over here in the corner, and then we let go. Remove our thumb from the hose, and then here's all the dirt getting sucked up. And all this dirt here is from one week's time. They are very messy, and then the water gets yellow from the pee in it. Ew. So, yeah, I mean, and I have rocks that we got at the creek. If you have little, smaller, like aquarium gravel rocks, they can actually swallow them. And that can be harmful because if they can't pass them, then, you know, if they eat enough of them, that could probably kill them. D-A-D-D-D. -D -D -D. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure that the gravel or the rocks, really, that the rocks are big enough so that they can't swallow them. And they will dig around in here and rummage quite a bit, you know. I mean, they'll turn this stuff here upside down, digging in these, gra in these rocks. And you just move them around and you can see all the dirt that's coming up. And then keep an eye on the bucket. When it gets full, that you can switch over to the other bucket. I'm ready to do. You just put your finger over the hole. So whenever you go out and dump it, should I like pause the recording? Yeah, I guess you can, or you can just show them the titles. Well, we only have thirty-three minutes of recording time on here. All right. Well, when you're about thirteen minutes through, I guess if you want to, you can. Uh, Pause it now because all I'm doing now is um, just cleaning out the dart really good. Go from one end to the other and clean out the dart really good. Just suck all the debris from the bottom. So then how long would you say this like whole process of cleaning takes? Well, it used to take me an hour and a half, but I've streamlined it over time where now it takes me about an hour to fully clean it from beginning to ending. It takes me about an hour. Yeah, you figured it out, and now you're going to show all of YouTube. Yeah, and it took me a while, too, to streamline it and, uh, you know, come up with the easiest, fastest, quickest solution to clean them because it is tedious. It's a lot of work. And it is a big commitment, that's all I can say. So, if you want to hit pause, because I'm about to fill the second bucket up, and then we'll see you after I cleaned out uh, the whole bottom here. Okay. 
All right, so now we're back. I cleaned out the bottom. I take about four buckets full of water with dirty debris out of the bottom. So now I've got my water hose set up going out the window here and just pinched it on the bottom, you know, between the window. And uh, then we're going to take the hose here. And then we're going to stick this into our water hose really quick. And then the water is going to start running. Gravity does its thing. And then we just put this here in the corner. And I put it to the height of to where I want it to suck out the water. And I usually go about right here to leave some old water in there because of the good bacteria and just the whole setup. You know, you're not supposed to do 100% water change. But because of how dirty and yellow the water is, I don't want to do like a 25-50 or whatever. I do probably 80% water change because the water is just too nasty. So while we've got the water draining, I'm going to take my scrubbing sponge here and you can tell in here how dirty the glasses from the inside so we're gonna give all this a good scrubbing all the way around and try to stay away from the silicone in the corners so you don't uh, take any of the silicone off because then your tank might start leaking <laughs> yeah really so now, back side here if there is any dirt, like algae growth on the bottom, which that doesn't happen very often, but you can go lower as far as cleaning, but usually the bottom stays pretty clean. And then the suction cups for the heater, I clean real good with the sponge. One of them has stopped sticking too, so I'll put the one that doesn't want to stick anymore to the bottom. Yeah, that one don't want to stick out more. And then, I, this heater is glass, so you have to be very careful with this that you don't break it. And it also has a line where it tells you the water submersion line. That's how far it needs to be underwater for it to work properly and not burn up. So, always give the heater a good cleaning while you're going across there. Now on this side, I've lost some of my silicone in the corners, which is not good. Next summer, I'm going to have to come up with a solution, either take them out in the summer and put them outside for a while in a kiddie pool or something, and re this or just buy a bigger tank. I don't know which I'm going to do. So now that we've got this clean, we're going to let this drain. And I'm going to go clean the filter real quick. Now do I have to come with? No, I think it, quit cleaning the filter, you just take the old dishwashing brush <laughs> to it and give it a good Bless scrubbing. Me. Throw the old carbon filters away. And then here's the new carbon filters that you put in them. It's just a filter from Walmart. And when you put the new ones in, you have to let these run under water until they, the water runs clean. It has a lot of carbon dust in here. And that needs to be kind of washed and cleaned out before you actually put them in the filter. But I'm going to go clean the filter, and then we will be back. Pause. I'm going to show the turtles real quick. I'm showing the turtles how they're rummaging around in the litter box. <laughs> yes, the turtles are rummaging, but they will not get out. <laughs> and they never have got out. <laughs> so, yeah. One... All right, we're back. I've cleaned the filter and put it back up, plugged it in. 
And now I'm going to do another cleaning down here with the net. And what I do is I just go squishing through the water here back and forth with the net. And I don't know if you can see this, but it swirls up all kinds of gunk that is still hiding between the rocks here that you miss while you're doing the vacuuming. I mean, it's just, you can't get it all with the vacuum pump. So what I do is I just do this several times, both sides, until the water pretty much is clear and no more gunk comes coming up between the rocks and uh, finish cleaning this. So I'm going to continue this and see you in a couple minutes. All right, so now we've drained all the water out of here. It actually drained a little more than I usually do. I don't usually make it that low. I go to about here usually, but that's all right. So I got the filter hooked up, and it's plugged in. So now I'm going to start filling it again, bucket by bucket. And where I have two sinks in the kitchen and the utility room, I have both faucets going with the two buckets. So pretty much one is always full, and it takes me about 25 or so buckets of water to fill this back up. So we'll be right back. One. All right, so... We're pouring the bucket in, and um, we're about halfway there, and yeah, very entertaining stuff, guys. Well, here goes our last bucket of water, maybe. Yeah, we'll see where we're at when we put everything back together. Here goes the dock. Power. Yeah. Now we're gonna put these back on here to make sure it stays in place. There. All right. Now for the big cage. bungee cord that helps keep it in place in case the turtles get rowdy. We've got rowdy turtles. Yeah, sometimes. So therefore we have party animals. Yep. They're pretty rowdy sometimes. Alright. There's that. Put this up here. And then make sure that the ramp is extended all the way. We're in the water, so we're good. Turtles actually don't need a lot to climb out. If it's, you know, this far in the water, that's plenty for them to climb out. Oh. Here comes the heat lamp. Back in. Here they are, Frick and Frack. <laughs> Just kidding, they don't have names. They're ready to go back in their tank. <laughs> there we go, gently let them go into the water. There we go. All right, so now lift this up. 
And we forgot to put water in the filter. That's not good. Yeah, no. Oh, I yeah, no crap, Sherlock. <laughs> we'll go ahead and put the filters in here. They're washed and cleaned. Oops. Short side first. There we go. And there's that one. Now we'll put some water in there. You can show them the bottles for a second. While I fill the filter. Usually I do not forget this. Yeah, I would do on YouTube yes. today. Because you have to put water in the ah. filter. Chloe. Psst, psst. Chloe. Chloe. We stuck the water. Psst. Chloe. Let's try this again. Here we go. Chloe. And I have some turtle tank sludge remover that I put in there. I'm about out though. Usually I put five caps in there. So since we're about out, I'm just going to pour the rest in here. And then I have to get more. And I was talking earlier about how expensive titles are. The filters at one place, I paid like $15 or so for six filters. And um, I can find them on Chewy now for like $7 for almost half. So it pays to shop around where you can buy the cheapest food and filters you have to change them every week the throwaway filters so they last one box lasts three weeks because you use two filters and then also what i found on chewy i've been buying the big four pound um ca canister whatever you want to call it jug of turtle food and this is a lot cheaper than what you have to pay say at walmart or so I paid like $5 or more for this little thing at Walmart. I don't remember what I paid for all of this, but it's like way, way cheaper. You save a ton of money when you buy that big one. And then I also feed them, this is a um, grub bag turtle treats. They're shrimp, freeze dried, and they love the shrimp. I feed them a small handful every day. They love them. And then they also get free striped mealworms. They really love them. That is a special treat for them when they get these. They're supposed to have greens and stuff, and I've Googled it, but then I've tried to feed mine greens, but they do not like them so I mean and I don't bother with it anymore so what I also put in the water is slow release calcium block which they need for their shell and I think mine have never laid any eggs but if they do I think they need calcium for that too but I put in one of these every week when I clean them and I think I found these cheapest on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. So you really have to shop around and see where you can buy the stuff cheapest. Bargain hunting. And I buy in bulk. When I buy these, I buy probably 15 of them. When I bought these filters, I bought, I think, 20 of these packs because Chewy had a deal. If you spend $70 or $100, you got a $30 gift card. Guess what I bought $100 worth of? And it took me all year, and I still have you know a bunch of um, boxes down here in storage. So yeah, this goes in the water. And just drop this in down here. And the turtles are happy in the clean tank there. Show our viewers the happy turtles in the clean water and now we're good to go till next saturday yay yay
So think really hard about getting these because they are time consuming, expensive, but I do love them. I wouldn't give nothing for them. I mean, I, or take nothing for them. I think that's the say. I wouldn't take nothing for them. I guess I'll have them till I die. I'm sure they're going to outlive me because they can live up to 40 years. Yeah, and they so, probably might outlive me, too, <laughs> if I'm unlucky. Yeah, so think about that, too. They live a very long time. But anyways, there's just some happy turtles. So if, if you like our video, give us a thumbs, thumbs up. Thumbs up. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Leave some comments, you know, if you have questions. So, there's power. Got to be in the middle of things. Come here. Say hi. Yep. And there's power guest appearance. <laughs> so, until next time, we'll see you. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Adios. Adios.